Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at section 7.4, solving problems with quadratic equations. Uh, we're going to be splitting it up into two parts. This is going to be the first part, part A, and then I'll have a second part, part B. In this part we're going to look at some advantages and disadvantages for ways to solve uh, quadratic equations, so either graphing, factoring, or using the quadratic formula. Those are all the ways that we have done so far. We are going to do some examples or some problems as well that deal with uh, solving it using those different ways. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first method we're going to look at is graphing. Now the advantages to graphing is that it's going to be very visual. It's going to give you a picture of what's going on. The disadvantages to graphing though is that typing something or putting something into your calculator may take some time, so it's going to be time consuming, plus it'll only give you decimal answers. It won't give you exact answers to uh, problems. The second way is factoring. Now factoring, most of the time, once we've done this a lot and we've gotten good at it, is the advantage for that is that it's quite fast. The disadvantages of factoring is that you might not always be able to factor. So factoring is a good one because you can solve a question really quick, but if you can't actually factor it, then it's not going to be really useful to you. And then the last one is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, the good thing about that is that it's always going to work regardless of what you're given. And it's going to provide exact values. So for when you have questions that say give the answer in exact form or in a simplified radical or something along those lines, the quadratic formula is going to be good for that. The bad thing though, or the disadvantages for a quadratic formula, is that it's very time consuming. And I would also add that there are lots of calculations, so it's easy to make mistakes. Okay, now we know the advantages and disadvantages of these three methods. You're going to be able to kind of pick the one that's best fit for each type of question. Uh, one last note I got here is that if you're ever told to solve something algebraically, you're going to have to use either factoring or quadratic formula. Graphing is not doing it algebraically. Algebraically means to do it by hand. Okay, so let's get into our examples. So in the first example here, it says two numbers have a sum of 14 and a product of 45. Determine the numbers algebraically. So I'm going to have to do this by hand. I can't do this graphically at some point. Everything should have to be done by hand because it says algebraically. So what we want to do is we want to come up with some information given the statements we got. So two numbers have a sum of 14. So let's say we got two numbers. I'm going to say let x and y be our numbers. Okay, so if I know they have a sum of 14, that tells me that if I add them, right, sum means to add, if I add them up, I know I'm going to get 14. And then if it says I have a product of 45, product means multiply, I know that when I multiply them, x times y, I should get 45. So out of this, I get two equations. There's my first one, there's my second one. If you can make two equations, two equations, and there's two things you're looking for, you're definitely going to be able to solve it. So what we want to do is we are going to substitute one of these into the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out what y is, and I'm going to sub that in where I see y in this one. Okay, so taking this first equation, I am going to subtract x from both sides so that my x's cancel, and then I have just y equals 14 minus x. And I'm going to take that 
and I'm gonna put that in where I see Y right here. So that's gonna go in right there. So let's write that out. So in equation number two, it's now X times, and Y changes into 14 minus X. Okay, so to solve this, I'm going to first distribute the X into the brackets there. So that's gonna give me 14X minus X squared equals 45. And then I am going to move everything all onto one side. It doesn't matter which side you move it to. So I am going to move, just so that I get the y squared here to be positive, I am going to move everything to the other side. And when it moves over there, all their signs are going to change. So there's now nothing on this side. And then x squared moves over. It's now positive. 14x moves over. It's negative. And then 45 is already over here, so it stays positive. Okay, now this we've seen before in quadratic equations. To solve this, we need to use our product and our sum. So the product is going to be the first number, which is a hidden 1, times the last number, which is positive 45. So that gives us 45. And then the sum is the middle number, it's just negative 14. So I've got to try to come up with two numbers that are going to multiply to 45 and sum to negative 14. Okay, and those two numbers are negative 5 and negative 9. Okay, so then our factors are going to break apart. It's going to be x minus 5 and x minus 9. And then to solve that, I'm just going to go up here. We got to take each of these factors and set them equal to 0. So I'm going to have x minus 5 equals 0, and then I'll add 5 onto both sides. So I got x equals 5, because those cancel out there. And then my other one, I had x minus 9, set that equal to 0, add 9 onto both sides. So 9's cancel out, and I get x equals 9. Okay, so I got two different answers. We got to figure out now what the y is for each one of these. So if you had x equals 5, so if x equals 5, we want to figure out what the y is. Okay, and I know the y is this right here. So y equals 14 minus x. y equals 14 minus x. And x, we just found, x is 5. And 14 minus 5 just gives us 9. Okay, if I do my other one, if x equals 9, that's going to be y equals 14 minus x. Hopefully you guys can still see that. So y equals 14 minus, the x is now a 9. So I get y equals 5. Okay, so in both of these answers, I can see one of the numbers was 5 and it gave me out a 9. In the other one it was 9 and it gave me out a 5. So the two numbers that they're giving me, one is saying the answers to the question are 5 and 9. The other one is saying it's 9 and 5, which essentially they're both the exact same thing. So the two numbers that are going to sum to 14 and multiply or have a product of 45, they are going to be 5 and 9. Okay, on to our next question. So this one says the length of a rectangular garden is 5 meters longer than its width. Determine the dimensions of the garden algebraically. Again, algebraically means that we're going to have to do this by hand to the nearest hundredth if its area is 200 meters squared. So let's start with that first sentence again. The length of a rectangular garden is 5 meters longer than its width. So I know I have a rectangular garden, so let's draw out a rectangular garden. And I'm just going to put on there length and one side's width. Okay, And I know the length is, think is, is like equals 5 meters longer than its width. So whatever the width is, it's 5 meters more. So the width is 
w plus 5. Okay, the next sentence said, determine the dimensions of the garden to the nearest hundredth if the area is 200 meters squared. So I know another piece of information, the area is 200 meters squared. Okay, but I know the area for a rectangle, that is length times width. So what I'm going to do is, I see this area here, I'm going to replace it with 200. And then this L I had here, I know L is just W plus 5. So L is changing into W plus 5, and W can just stay as W. So now what I have is an equation where there's only one thing I don't know. So I can solve for that one thing, which is W. So I'm going to distribute into my brackets. That's going to give me W squared plus 5W and then move everything to the same side. So let's minus 200 to get rid of that 200. Minus 200, the 200's cancel, so I got zero over there. And we got w squared plus 5w minus 200. Okay, and then again at this point, we gotta try to do our product and our sum, if we could. So we're gonna try to multiply to 200 and sum up to five. So if you wanted to try to think about the numbers for a little bit, you can. Okay, but in this case, none of the numbers are actually going to work. Okay, so all the factors, you're not going to find a pair that work. What we need to do is not use the product and the sum. What we're going to do for this one is we're going to use our quadratic formula because, again, we had to do it algebraically. I can't just graph it and get the answer. So... It's w equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and then all divided by 2a. And then I'm going to start to plug in my values. So there's a hidden one here, that's a. 5 is b and then the negative 200 is c. So I got minus b, which is 5, plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 200. That's all in a square root. Divided by 2 times a, where a is a 1. Okay, then we're going to start to simplify this. So we got negative 5 plus or minus inside the radical there. When we simplify that, you get 825. And then that's all being divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So I just got a 2 in the bottom. Okay, and now this I can put into my calculator and it'll give me out the decimal. Okay, and we want it to the nearest hundredth. So let's write out what we get. We get negative 16.86 dot dot dot. That was one of them. Or you can also get depending on if you use the plus or the minus here, you get 11.8614 dot dot dot. Okay, now one of these answers is going to be extraneous, meaning we can't use it. Okay, so if you want to guess, try to guess which one it is. So this value here, we got negative 16.86. Now what were we finding? We were finding a width. Can a width ever be negative? No, it cannot. So this we got to get rid of it, that's extraneous. And all extraneous means is it's a solution that doesn't make sense. Okay, it's an extra solution that doesn't work. So I'm going to take that answer I did have of 11.86. That's what my W is, so let's just write that. And I'm going to round it to the nearest hundredth. So that is going to be that value right there. So the 1 is not going to round up the 6, so I just get 11.86. And then we're going to use that to find out what our length is. Now I know the length from early on was just w plus 5. So w plus 5, put that there, and then w was just 11.86. So we put that there, plus 5, so we get 16.86.
Okay, and then I'm just going to write all my answers all in one box. So W we got was 11.86 and our units were meters. And then the length is 16.86 meters. Okay, and then to quickly verify your answer, we're going to check and see if these two numbers work with the question. So we can see that one, the length is definitely five more than the width, but we want to make sure that when I go to find the area, I get about 200 meters squared. So I'm just going to go 11.86, so the width times by the length, 16.86. Okay, and now these have been rounded, so I'm not going to get exactly 200, but I should get really, really close. And I get 199.9596. So that's really, really close to 200 meters squared. Okay, on to our last question here now. And this one, it says, a store rents an average of 750 video games per month at $4.50 each. They want to increase the revenue to $7,000 per month. For every dollar increase in price, they're going to rent fewer or 30 fewer games per month, which makes sense. If you increase the price, less people are going to want to buy. Okay, so can the owners generate $7,000 per month? So whenever you guys have these revenue questions, you always want to start with your revenue function. And to get your revenue, it's just the number of items times the price. So we got price times number of items. Okay, and in this case, off the very beginning, we had, it was $4.50 times 750 video games. Okay, but then we knew this piece of information. If I increase the price by a dollar, we're going to get 30 fewer games. So let's write that in. It's going to be $4.50 but then I'm going to increase the price by $1. I don't know how many times I'm going to increase it by a dollar. So I put this N in here to represent N amount of times of increases. And then we had 750 games, but we're going to have 30 fewer games, and it's going to happen N times. Again, we don't know how many times it's going to be 30 less, so we got to put the N in there. Okay, and then whenever you have a revenue question like this and then it doesn't say you have to do it algebraically what you want to now use is we're going to use our calculator to graph this okay so we're going to graph this so let's get out our calculator and let's put that in so go to your y equals and our y in this case is just r so it's like y equals or r equals and then we're going to start with this so bracket 4.50 plus 1n, and we're going to use x instead of n. That's all we got on our calculator. And then close the bracket, and then start our next bracket. 750 minus 30x. And then make sure you close the bracket. Okay, so we got that all typed in. I can click graph to see what I get. Okay, so I didn't get a really good picture, so what I want to do is you can try going zoom, and then there's some different options. Now, zoom zero, you might have to scroll kind of and find it, but zoom zero is it's going to try to fit it so that it shows some good characteristics on your graph. So click enter on that. Okay, so I can see more of the graph. I still can't see out this side, so I'm going to try to zoom out and see if that'll help. So zoom, and then number three will zoom out and then you got to click enter for it to actually zoom out okay so we got that graph right there and what we want to do is we're trying to find the max amount of revenue because if I know the maximum amount of revenue then I can answer the question it says can the owners generate seven thousand dollars per month because if I know I can make say eight thousand then I can definitely make seven thousand so let's find the max so we're going to go second trace that gets us to the calculate and then we want to find max so it's number four okay go to the vertex the highest point and then we want the left bound so go to the left somewhere click enter and then go 
over to the right because it's asking for the right bound. You can just keep clicking or hold and it'll also scroll. And then click enter and it'll show you in between the two points. It's going to try to find the max there. Click enter for it to guess that point. Okay, so I can see my X and my X was really my N. N is this 10.249 number. And then my Y, which was my R, so my revenue, is this 6,526.875. So let's write those points out back on our page. Okay, so there is our vertex. So I know from that we said that this was the R, that was the revenue, and this was the N. So the max revenue that we can make is that 6,256. Okay, point, and then we'll round this. The five is gonna round up the seven, so we get 88 cents. Okay, so therefore, if my max amount of money is only about 6,300-ish dollars, I definitely can't make 7,000. That's more than what my max is. Okay, and then just one small note, make sure if you guys ever put in your dollar sign, dollar sign goes at the start, it does not go at the end behind the 7,000, put it at the beginning. So lastly, we just got our textbook questions. I'm going to write them down here at the bottom. So we are on page 430, and we have numbers 3, 7, and 8. The second part to this video is going to be called 7.4b, so just look for that one, and it'll be in the same category as this one.